and welcome to Ellen Ruth's Soap. I'm Ellen and today we are going to have some fun making soap. It's going to be a bit of an adventure and here is why. Um, Wholesale Supplies Plus was having some fragrances on closeout sale and I bought this fragrance. I bought eight ounces and they sent it in three, two two ounce bottles and a four ounce bottle. It's called Illusion. Uh, and I went back to look at the reviews and find the scent notes and it is no longer posted. So I know that this has just reading the label 6% vanillin. So this soap is going to discolor today, but uh, I have no other description for it other than it just smells fantastic. I don't even know how to describe it. I'm going to figure out how to describe it. See if I can find another supplier that has it and get the scent notes to read to you all. And another fun thing about the soap today is I'm going to share the full recipe down in the description box below and we're making tallow soap again. I have another video. We're going to do a little bit different recipe today. I got this non-GMO sustainably sourced beef tallow and tallow makes a fabulous soap. So we're going to do the mystery fragrance with our tallow bar and I'm thinking I'm not going to add any color with the 6% vanillin. I know this is going to discolor. So what I'll do is pull off a little portion of the batter uncolored so I can do a swirl in there. That's what I'm thinking. So no micas today. We're just going to give this a shot. I'll do the kale and clay like I always do because I love my kale and clay. So uh, last time I made a beef tallow soap, I had several people ask me, can I use lard instead, which is pig fat. Beef tallow is beef fat. But um, lard and tallow have a little bit different saponification values. And so if you're gonna take this recipe and change any of the oils in it, you do need to run the numbers through a soap calculator to double check your lye volume because not all oils have the same sap value. If you hear that SAP sap value, that's what that means. Unlike lotions and things like that, you can play around with the types of oils you're using. It's just a liquid or a hard oil and you can switch them up. With soap or cold processed soap, you need to run your numbers through a soap calc if you're gonna change the recipe at all. And lard makes fabulous soap. So I'm not saying don't use it, I'm just saying run your numbers. So there's a word on that. Now I have to get everything pulled together and let's come back and work with this mystery fragrance and make some beef tallow soap. Right, we are back and ready to get making our lye solution for this soap today. And uh, what I have in this pot, I will have this recipe down below in both ounces and grams form. So depending on how you like to measure, um, I'll be talking about mostly in ounces because that's just the language I speak. It just comes out naturally in me. I'm trying really hard to learn how to convert to grams, but I'm an ounces girl. Anyway, uh, I have 24 ounces of liquid here or 680 grams. And I split this, I have aloe vera and distilled water. This is the aloe vera juice I use. Aloe vera juice, not aloe vera gel. You can see it's very liquidy. It's the consistency of water. That's what you want when you're doing aloe this way. You can use aloe gel in a soap, but that's not what we're doing today. So this juice I get at Walmart. It is very inexpensive. I will leave a link. I have found it on Amazon. It's a lot on Amazon. So I suggest going to your local pharmacy section or Walmart grocery store. A jug of aloe vera juice is readily available and it's gonna save you a lot of money. Anyway, this is 50%, 12 ounces aloe, 12 ounces distilled water. You could do 100% aloe juice, you could do 100% water. I'm just showing you what I've got today. So 50-50 aloe and water in here. Here is my lye, sodium hydroxide. I have 13.4 ounces of lye or 379 grams of lye. So what I'm gonna do now is add my additives because I do love additives in soap. You could add your lye to this liquid, even straight water, you're good to go, it's ready. But I like my bells and whistles. So to this water, before I add my lye, I have just natural unbleached sugar. You could use powder sugar, you could use white sugar, you can use zero sugar. Um, this is just what I like. I like the natural unbleached sugar. Sugar is a lather booster and a lather builder in soap. Makes a really bubbly, fluffy lather. So I love it. Um, and to this amount, so this is 24 ounces of water. This is a two tablespoon scoop. And I'm gonna add this entire scoop in here and let it dissolve. You wanna make sure and dissolve your sugar in here before you add your sodium hydroxide. Uh, your sugar will not dissolve if you already have a pre-made 
lye solution. I'm not sure what the chemistry that's going on there is, but your sugar will just clump up and caramelize into little chunky bits and it won't be a smooth solution. But if you take the time to just stir it around here, this is very cold. I keep my aloe juice and my water in the refrigerator. It's not frozen, but it's very chilled and um, it will dissolve. I just stir till I don't see any more granules in the bottom and we're on for the next step which again is optional. It is my Tussa Silk Fibers. Um, I have Tussa Silk right now, that's what I'm using. I've used Mulberry Silk, and actually I think I preferred the Mulberry. It was a little smoother. Um, this is a natural, let me put this off to the side and try and show you. This skein of silk is very natural and it has some flex in there. Uh, there, if you can see. So it's not, you can get some like little natural uh, flex in your soap. So if you're trying to make like a perfectly stark white bar, some of these little natural um, bits in here might come through. Doesn't bother me. I'm gonna put oats in my soap anyway. Um, but just to let you know, so this is an unbleached, unrefined natural silk and I take about this much. I cannot tell you how much this weighs. I don't have a jewelry scale and even if I did, I don't think this would register. There's some little, see the little natural bits right there? I'll just pull those out, but those would get in your soap and um, be little spots in your soap. And if that bothers you, get a uh, milled silk or skip the silk altogether. You don't have to do this. Again, this is just an extra additive that I love. I think the silk gives the wet bar an extra shine and it makes a very silky feel in the lather. That's why I add it. So set that off to the side. Now that my sugar is all dissolved in my cold water lye solution, or my cold water and aloe solution, I'm just gonna put this little fluff of silk and take my spatula and sink it down. And now I'm gonna just add my sodium hydroxide crystals in here and stir until this is all dissolved. And you wanna stand back. You do not wanna breathe the fumes. They smell terrible and they're not good for you, so don't breathe those. And I just stir, and this will heat up very quickly. I will stir this until I don't feel any more granules in the bottom and it feels smooth, and then uh, you know it's all dissolved. You just wanna keep stirring until it's 100% dissolved so you don't have any big chunks in there or any surprises. And I don't know if the camera is picking it up or not, but there's already steam coming off. This is heated up. I can't touch this pot. It's gotten so hot already. So lye is not, nothing to mess around with. You don't need to be afraid. You just need to use proper cautionary measures and be respectful. And it's not a scary thing, but it's also it's not something to take lightly. <laughs> All right, so this is pretty much ready to go. All right, and the last thing that I'm gonna do to my lye pot when this starts to cool down a little bit, I just like to not add this in when it's super hot. This is my sodium lactate. And this helps harden the soap up quicker so that it unmolds real easy the next day. Um, you don't need this. You can just let your soap sit for a couple days or if you're using a really hard bar of soap recipe, no problem. I've forgotten to add this and I just proceed with my unmolding as usual. But I do like to add it in there. If you don't have sodium lactate or you don't wanna buy this big jug or it comes in littler jugs too. Brambleberry happened to have a sale when I got this. It was great price, so I grabbed it. What you could do is when you add your sugar before you add the sodium hydroxide and you just have your water or liquid portion, you could add the same amount, um, I'd say one to two tablespoons of salt, just regular table salt or Redmond's real salt, pink salt, just a good salt in here, not Epsom salt. <laughs> has to be like a table type salt. And that is a good soap hardening element also. And it's very inexpensive. Salt is super cheap. So um, here, let me show you. Literally, you can get this at the grocery store. I think this was like under a dollar, maybe even 50 cents, super cheap. One or two tablespoons of this dissolved in your water also, and it will do as good, if not better, at hardening than your sodium lactate. But I use this in other formulations too. So I have the sodium lactate on hand. This is a good alternative. But again, please, you don't need that. You don't need the salt, you don't need the sugar, you don't need the silk. You can just make lye and water, and it makes great soap. So I love the fact that you can make this as complicated or as simple as you want. 
I'm going to stop talking about line out. I'm going to get this in an ice bath cooling and let's come back and measure our oils for this batch today. All right, our live solution is an ice bath cooling and I'm gonna use this. I get asked all the time, what are my mixing pitchers? This is called a short form, although it's not short, a short form polypropylene beaker. And these are in like science sections and uh, I will try to find an active link. I've, I've put links for this in my Amazon store and down below and then that seller will be out of it. So I will try to find a good link. I love these, they are workhorses. The handles are small enough, they're very comfortable to hold. This one is a five liter pitcher nice big size so this is going to be the bulk oils in here and then I have a little one off to the side here this is a one liter pitcher that I will pour off for my unscented portion that will hopefully and I'll add a touch of TD so hopefully we can get a little swirl in this mystery soap today of course if it starts speeding up I'm going to skip this step and we'll just get it in the mold you know <laughs> so again it's a mystery but uh here is my pitcher. Let's get to measuring the oils. And the first oil in here is coconut oil. I love coconut oil and soap. It makes for a hard bar. It, it's the lather oil. When you want a bubbly bar of soap, your coconut oil is where your good lather comes from. So we're gonna do 19.2 ounces or 544.3 grams of coconut oil. I like 76 degree melting coconut oil. They make a 92 or a 96 degree coconut oil. That's used for making uh, deodorant bars and we'll talk about making natural deodorant in another video. Most coconut oil that you buy at the grocery store is a 76 degree. So if you're on a soap supplier and they ask you what you want, 76 degree melting point is the normal coconut oil. That's what we're using. Let's get to measuring it. All right, the next oil going in here. I like to measure all my hard oils and butters first, get them melted before I do my liquids. So the next hard oil is our tallow, our beef tallow. And we need 28.8 ounces or 816.5 grams of tallow for this size recipe. And I'll also leave the percentages down below. If you wanna size this down for a smaller batch, you can do that too. All right, and our last hard butter going in here is shea butter. I buy it in bulk. And we are going to be adding 4.8 ounces of shea butter or 136 grams of shea butter in here. Now to speed things along, I'm gonna go ahead and melt these down a little bit. Um, I do it in the microwave. If you hate the microwave, use a double boiler proof pot to measure your oils in, a metal pot of some kind or glass, and you can do a double boiler method. Um, but I'm gonna get these melted before we add our liquid oils. All right, we are back and they're pretty much melted. It's a little opaque, but um, the big chunks are all melted in here. And so now, our next ingredient is castor oil. And I love castor oil in soap. This is also a lathering oil. You don't wanna go past 10% castor in soap. It can get a tacky feel. I like to keep it low around 5% or less. So castor oil is going in here at a rate of 4.8 ounces or 136 grams of castor oil. All right, and the last ingredient is olive oil. Um, I just source mine wherever I can find the best price. This is from Costco. I get it at Sam's Club. I order it in bulk from Soper's Choice. Um, I'm not picky about olive oil, although I will say an olive oil pomace can trace a little faster than just a regular straight up olive oil. Um, and there's whole debates about olive oil in soap and I'll let you do your own research on that. I'm not even gonna open that can of worms up. This is the olive oil I'm using today. And I need 38.4 ounces of olive oil or 1,088.6 grams of olive oil. So let's get that in there and we'll get to blending in our additives. All right, now I've got all the oils in here. I like to run my stick blender through and get them blended up and in case there's any of the hard oils and butters that didn't melt all the way, this will get them all blended up and melted just to make sure everything is fully incorporated. You can see there's a little bit of chunkage left in there, but that's gonna blend out 
because this is warm, warm to the touch. I'll be taking the temperature and show you what we're soaping at today. All right, we are back for our soap additives. And this again is a negotiable thing. I like my extra additives. You can totally skip this and just have oil and lye water and make fabulous soap. But you know me, I love all the extras. And so here is my kale and clay, white kale and clay. I love it in my soap. It gives a slippy feel to the lather and I think clay is great for your skin. And here's my colloidal oats. And again, I think oats have really beautiful skin benefits if you don't have an oat allergy. <laughs> if you do, please leave them out. Um, so for this volume, this is a two tablespoon scoop. I'm gonna go ahead and do the full kind of rounded two tablespoons of my colloidal oats and my kale and clay and I like to get these blended up really well in the oils so they can sort of plump up and absorb and you don't have any dry pockets in your soap when you're blending and then after you add the lye and you're trying to blend them out and things can speed up you know what I'm saying so I like to get them pre-blended in here and then they're just nice and smooth throughout the whole thing while I'm at it let's talk about it I've got my titanium dioxide off to the side to add to my little unscented portion just so that swirl will pop um, again, I think if I didn't add this, it probably would pop out anyway, but I'm gonna add a touch because I really want it to show. Got my mystery fragrance here off to the side that's only gonna go in the main body of the soap. And let me read the scent notes to you. Uh, this has notes of citrus, kind of earthy greens, a little florals with base notes of, base notes of amber, sandalwood, and musk. It is delightful, and I don't know why nobody's carrying it right now because <laughs> this smells great. So let me get these blended in and let's come back and get ready to make some soap. Right, we are back. Our lye water aloe solution is cool. Our oils are all ready with the additives. I've got my hanger tool, which is a flexible gear tie. Here's Here's a version. It comes like this. They're like in the hardware department. Um, I'll leave a link down below for the one I got. Uh, for the size of mold I'm using, you want at least a 24 inch um, bendy thing and you can make it fit any size mold, but you want at least 24 inches so you have enough at the ends to stick up so you can swirl with it. Very inexpensive hanger tool. Um, here, I'll show you if I can get one out of here. So it just comes like this and then you bend it to fit your mold and you've got handles on the side and pretty low tech, but you know what? It gets the job done. So there's my high class hanger tool. And what else? Okay, so because this is a mystery fragrance and I'm not sure how fast it's gonna move, I like to keep a whisk off to the side. If I feel like things are, this goes so fast, this gives me a little more control. It stirs a little slower, and when I put the fragrance in, I'm probably going to whisk it, and I'll get a feel for the batter. You can kind of feel if it's going from a light pudding to a thick pudding quickly. Um, and if I don't feel that, I will employ my stick blender, but this is a little more aggressive and can speed things up a little bit fast sometimes. So. I like to have those tools there in case I need them. And I do have the hanger tool there in case, you know, if things are behaving and I can do a little swirl, we're gonna do that. But, so just have everything kind of prepared and ready to go. I have my little arsenal of things off to the side so that depending on how this moves, we can work with it. Got my mold off to the side here. Everything's ready to go. Oh, temperatures. <laughs> I'm talking, I'm not telling you. Let's stir this up here and take the temperature. My oils are at 90 degrees, which is a little bit warmer than I normally do. Usually they're around 85 to 70. And this just came out of ice bath, so I think my lye is gonna be cooler. Yep, we're at 72 on the lye. Now, a lot of soap books will tell you to be within 10 degrees of each other. And um, I'm not gonna say that's bad advice because it may be great advice, but I'm not gonna wait. <laughs> I have soaked with different temperatures before and we're in like the zone. So 70 and 90, I'm okay doing it. We're gonna go ahead and do, make this soap <laughs> right now. I'm not gonna wait for these oils to cool off anymore or this lye to warm up. I think it's a little more flexible than some people uh, talk about it being. 
Um, but again, it depends on your recipe and your familiarity with soap making. Temperatures, I think, are negotiable in soap making. All right, so since the mystery fragrance isn't in there, I'm gonna blend a little, but this recipe has 55% hard oils and butters and 45% liquid oils. So it could potentially be a fast moving uh, recipe even without fragrance. Um, this is not my normal recipe. So I'm proceeding with caution. So if you notice, I'm not pushing the button. You hear that? That's blending here. I'm just stirring this. I'm using this like a spoon just to get a feel for it because I want to watch it emulse. And it looks like we are at emulsion here. So I'm going to go ahead and pour off my little bit that I'm not gonna scent. And we'll let that sit off to the side while we play with our mystery fragrance. Hopefully it won't do anything crazy. And uh, that's why they pulled it off the shelves. I don't know, <laughs> well, wouldn't that be a bummer? But it is um, rated for soap, so it's okay to use in cold process soap. So, all right, I'm gonna quit talking. We're gonna do it. Let's add the fragrance in. Boy, this fragrance does smell really good. I mean, this combination, I would call it unisex. It's, uh, it's very nice. All right, and again, I'm gonna stir. Oh, pretty yellow morph there. And just a little bit of pulsing here. Wow, that's a cool color morph, isn't it? It's like, went from yellow to mustard. <laughs> Interesting. All right, so far we're doing good. Um, yeah, this is behaving really well. Other than the color morph, which, you know, I think based on my experience with soap, I think this is going to turn brown and not stay this mustard color. That would be my guess at this point. Boy, we're doing good. And this is with the two different temperature soaps. Um, so just, you know, if you're a beginner soaper, Take your temperatures, but you don't have to, you know, be an absolute stickler about having them within, you know, five to 10 degrees of each other. And when I first started soaping, everybody recommended soaping at 110 degrees. Quite frankly, that's not my preference. I do not like to soak that hot. Um, unless, you know, 100% coconut oils, there's always a few exceptions, you know, but from regularly, most of the time when you see me soaping, my oils are around 80 degrees and my lye is around 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's pretty much my jam. All right, I'm just gonna, this is behaving beautifully. I just wanna note that. It smells great, it's behaving beautifully. All right, let's pull over our little unscented portion here putting my titanium dioxide, just a little. And I think I'll go ahead and stick blend this. Here is my little flexi hanger tool that I made out of a cable or a gear tie, cable tie, whatever you call them. And so I'll talk you through what I'm doing today and you can do this a million different ways, but here's what I'm doing today. I'm putting it on the very outside. I'm going all the way down to the bottom. And on this, this is my first uh, soap loaf here. And I'm gonna start doing little circles and lift it up as I go all the way up. And then again, down little circles and then down and little circles. And then I'm halfway through and I'm gonna do a circles the opposite direction going through. I love doing that because it can make like a butterfly look, but there it is. That's one way to do the hanger swirl. And again, there's a million different ways to move your hanger around in there. You just have to experiment and see 
you know, after the cut, it's kind of a long wait. You gotta wait to cut yourself to see how the patterns came out, but it's really fun. I love hanger swirls. They're a little bit random, very beautiful. And now I'm just gonna drizzle my little leftover white here and probably just do a scoopy top here just to add some prettiness on each bar. I don't know, maybe I'll do a swirl with my uh, tooth or my um, chopstick or a chevron. What do you think? Chevron, scoopy top. Oh boy, so many options. I wish you all were here to tell me what you'd like me to do right now. I'll tell you what, let's do a chevron here or a, a back and forth and see how I like that. And then if it's not enough, uh, I don't know. It might not be enough. Let's just go real quick. And then if I don't like it, we can come in with our spoon and do a scoop top. Yeah. I don't think there's enough um, dimension in the top here, although that is pretty. So you can kind of play with it. I mean, it's going to get muddied up here after I do this too much. So you could just leave this right like this. I think that's beautiful. Or let's just wait a couple of minutes and let this firm up a little and we can come in with our spoon and just make a little dollops on there, which I think are beautiful. All right, it's literally just been a few minutes and now we're gonna come in with my little baby spoon. Anything, um, a popsicle stick works great for this, really any tool. I've used the handle of this when I want little teeny scoops, but I like the tip of my baby spoon a lot. And it makes a really pretty, just sloopy top. the next day. It's been a little more than 24 hours, about 26 hours to be specific, and look at the color morphing already. It smells fantastic. It looks beautiful, that caramely brown. Now, I do believe this is going to darken up even more, but I'm so happy. So, let's get in here and see how that swirl came out. And before I do, let me just tell you, I get asked a lot, this apparatus here is called a slab splitter. It's got one thin wire right here that you measure how thick you want your loaf to be and you set the wire. I got this from Workshop Heritage. I got my mold from Workshop Heritage. Um, this has been a very sturdy workhorse. I just use the wax paper on here to just have it glide easier and it makes for easier cleanup. It's totally not necessary, but I put it on there just for ease of cleanup. But anyway, that's the slab splitter. This whole thing is a soap slab that we are going to cut into loaves. So all that being said, let's get in here and see how the swirls came out on the inside. with the lovely Olga and I wanted to say a word about this multi bar soap cutter that's what these are called it's a multi bar um, and I have my wires set at one and a quarter inch uh, with the part this uh, provider good speed soap shop is currently closed um, I don't know if he's even available to do soap cutters anymore it's really sad when the war in ukraine broke out uh, he's a russian fellow his entire business had to be shut down so um, i will leave a link for a similar soap cutter that is very sturdy great reputation um, they, they don't have quite the color selection that 
that good speed does but really good solid multi-bar soap cutters i'll try to leave a link for a similar one down below and then of course if you're beginning a single bar cutter is perfect and you can even use just a flat edge knife to cut your soap you don't need a big apparatus like this but anyway there's a word about my lovely olga i'm so glad i got one when i did because i don't know if you can get these anymore Anyway, let's get on to the soap. Check that out. Look at how bright yellow, that mustardy yellow that it was, and then look at the top. So this is definitely going to darken up, and you can see the rim around the edge, and I think it might even get darker than that, but I will definitely post pictures at the end um, of as the progression as we go through this. Plus, I'm cutting these right now, and I'm probably going to wait until tomorrow to do the beveling and stamping just because I have a busy schedule. Uh, and so 24 hours from now, I bet these bars will be much darker than they even are today. So it is really fun to watch the discoloration process go along. But with 6% vanillin, which this had, um, these are definitely going to go brown, and I think even browner than that. But look at this is pretty. I mean, I almost wish they would stay this yellow. That's beautiful. But I also think this caramel brown is gorgeous. And it looks like the swirls are going to be really pretty also. And let me say, this fragrance smells divine. I really wish I knew why they discontinued this. It soaked beautifully. It smells fabulous. I, I don't understand why they don't carry this anymore. Maybe it was a copyright thing with the name Illusion. I don't know. Um, some people get very proprietary over their names of their products, and that is something to look out for when you make a product. Um, okay, here's a funny story. <laughs> it's story time. The fragrance from a Victoria's Secret called Love Spell. It's really fruity. It's a beautiful, bright fragrance oil. Um, I've never bought the actual perfume fragrance, but the fragrance oil is delightful. It behaves perfectly in soap. It makes great bath bombs, yada, yada. It's great. But that name, Love Spell, that's a trademarked name. Victoria's Secret owns that name uh, in certain font. Okay, it's very specific. But on YouTube, if you use the name Love Spell, your account will get spammed <laughs> with Dr. Spellcaster. And I mean, when I made a couple, I made a soap and I made some bath bombs, my entire YouTube channel got spammed with, you know, Dr. Love and cast a spell. And it took me hours to go clean that up and block people from posting on there. So just a caution if you're using Love Spell. This is illusion <laughs> or illusion type dupe, um, but there you go. I'm kind of ranting because I don't know why they quit carrying this because I'm loving it so far. Let's get to the next loaf. All right, here is the center loaf. The top was a little sloopy, but I think it's pretty. And again, let's talk about the top. Um, it's kind of fun when you have a fluid top as I was working it. You can muddy up the colors, but you don't have to stick with one design if you do like I did a swirly top and you don't like it, you can come in with your spoon and play with it. You have a little bit of time to play around and I love that. Oh, these are pretty. These are really nice. And uh, yeah, this fragrance is very complex. I love all the scent notes in it, I really do. So some of the swirls I think were a little off center. I wanted them to be more centered, but I still think they're so pretty. And again, as this discolors, these light colors are really gonna pop and that'll look great. Yeah, this yellow color doesn't really go with the fragrance. Let me show you also, you can see the speckles in there. That is the colloidal oats. Um, and if I had left like those flecks in the silk, you could see those, but the little dots in there is the colloidal oats. So if you ever want a like perfect color bar of soap, I would probably leave out the colloidal oats. In fact, I have done that before on like my candy cane soap where I want a pure white without any speckles. I don't put oats in those bars. I think they look beautiful and you don't really feel them. This soap doesn't have any exfoliating feel, but uh, you can definitely see them in a light color. Now, once this turns dark, you won't see those at all. But anyway, all the details <laughs> that go into soap making. And a lot of soap making is trial and error, if you will. Although I don't think you need to have that many errors. A lot of trial. Seeing what you like, seeing how you prefer to do things, um, and you will develop your own soaping personality, if you will. 
So this one's mine. I am loving it. All right, let's get to the last loaf. Okay, here is the last loaf, and I want to show you here on the back. So you can see it doesn't discolor at an even rate, but it will eventually catch up to itself. So like this end is lighter, um, and this end is darker, and the middle is darker. So when you are working with a discoloring fragrance and that's your only colorant, it will not necessarily migrate at the same time, but eventually it will end up the same color. So it just takes a little patience. All right, well, we covered a lot of information on a beginner or just basic soap making today. And I hope you enjoyed all the tips and information. This was kind of a long video and it's not done yet. We're gonna <laughs> let these sit overnight and uh, it'll be fun to watch it turn from this color to this color in 24 hours. I'm gonna make a bet that it's gonna darken up quite a bit. Um, it'll be fun to see. Yeah, it's fun to watch that. And if it goes in between, you know, I will try to take pictures of the progression. But again, you can see it doesn't discolor evenly. That's the darkest because this was exposed to the air all night and these were in the mold. So anyway, that's one of those fun, uh, I kind of geek out about soaping. It's, you know, it's my thing. Hope you enjoy it as much as I do. <laughs> this stuff fascinates me. I just love it. And I do thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you give this tallow recipe a try. So the recipe in ounces, grams, and percent form will be down below in the description box, and I hope you check it out. Let me know if you do check it out, and if you like it, I would love to hear back on how you enjoy making tallow soap. Well, thanks for joining me, and I hope you have a wonderful day. All right, it has been 24 hours, and the color is coming along beautifully. I'm going to wait a couple more days before I do photography because I think these will get even darker yet, but I am loving it. <laughs>